came in the mail yesterday. Um, got another package from uh, Hong Kong. I ordered something from eBay. Let's see what it is. And out comes the plastic bag with some high seed chips in it. It's labeled here. Well, a little tag asking me to make sure that I give them favorable comments on eBay. We got three little IC chips here. On the end of this, tape off. What we have here are three MCP 41010 digital potentiometers. So I bought three of these on eBay for just a little over $15. That included shipping. And it only took about eight or ten days for it to get here. This IC is made by Microchip. It comes in a 41 series and a 42 series. A 41 series is an 8-pin chip that has one digital potentiometer on board. The 42 series is a 14-pin chip that has two digital potentiometers on board. The digital potentiometer can hook up to any microcontroller. I'll be using an Arduino with three data lines which is the SPI bus. A digital potentiometer can be configured two ways. It can be configured as a rheostat, as you see here, by tying the wiper to one of the pins. Or it can be configured as a potentiometer, as you see here. The digital potentiometer is virtually the same as the physical potentiometer, with one significant difference. With a physical potentiometer, you need to turn a knob or slide a slider to change the resistance, and you have an infinite number of settings. Of course, there's no knob on a digital potentiometer. Instead, we need a microcontroller to change the resistance for us. I'll be using the Arduino. And we don't have an infinite number of settings we have only 256 finite steps. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at the math on that. Our chip is a 10K ohm resistor. So we'll put that in 10,000. And we have 256 steps. So I'll divide that by 256. And you see, that means that each step is about 39 ohms. That's pretty good. I think we could live with that resolution. So where are we going with this? Well, you remember this? This is my Prototino project. It's an Arduino clone, and I've added components here so that this will copy Morse code. In this corner up here, I have a tone decoder. The frequency of the tone that this will decode is determined by the value of this multi-turn potentiometer. I'd like to replace this physical potentiometer with a digital one. Let's take a closer look. Here you see my physical potentiometer and my digital potentiometer side by side. The physical potentiometer is a 20 turn 10K potentiometer. This is the same one that we used in the tone decoder circuit. That means that this little screw here can be turned 20 times to go all the way from 0 ohms to 10,000 ohms. Let's look at the math on that. Again, we'll start with 10,000 ohms. This time we're going to divide it by 20, the number of full turns that we have in our physical potentiometer. That gives us 500. That means that one full turn on the potentiometer is 500 ohms. Well, each step on our digital potentiometer is 39 ohms. Let's see how many steps we can get in one full turn. So we'll take that 500 and we'll divide it by 39. That tells us we can get 12, almost 13 steps that would equal a full turn on the physical potentiometer. Think of a clock, for example, with the numbers 1 through 12 around it. So if we were to turn our potentiometer from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock, not very far, that would be one of those steps. I think we'll be able to make this work, and here's why. Here's our project again our Prototino board. And here again, 
is our chip that does the tone decoding. You see these three capacitors along the side here? One of these capacitors determines the bandwidth of the frequency that we're going to decode. What that means is we use this potentiometer here to come up with a center frequency that, that will pass through here and send logic onto our microcontroller. That pass frequency has some bandwidth to it, which is determined by the capacitor. What it means is that a frequency a little bit lower or a frequency a little bit higher than the one we're actually trying to decode will qualify as a decoded signal. So if our resistor over here is only being turned one twelfth of a full turn to the equivalent of our steps in our digital potentiometer, I think we'll be able to be within the passband of the tone that we're trying to decode. In a future video, we'll see if I'm right.